Welcome back to the Hobby King KK2 checklist video series. Part 5 Initial Flight Test Turn on the transmitter. With the throttle down, connect the battery. Set the quad in a large field with no wind. Make sure that the ground is soft. It's better for crashing if you have to. It should be level and not covered with any high vegetation to help keep the props free turning on takeoffs and landings. Turn on the self-leveling to do your initial flights just to make sure you have the best control. We're not going to do any self-leveling tuning here. We're just going to do some basic flight testing. Before taking off, move the self-leveling switch on and off. Watch the LCD screen and confirm it's going on and off. Some radios like the DX6i require you to manually set your flaps value to get the switch to go on. Arm the quad by pushing the rudder stick to the lower right. We're going to test the quad movement without lifting the quad off the ground. Before increasing the throttle, hold the aileron hard right. Slowly increase the throttle just enough to lift one side of the quad up. The left side should come up. Decrease the throttle back to zero. Now check the aileron left. Repeat the process for the elevator. Elevator stick down should bring the front of the quad up and vice versa. Roll right should turn the quad clockwise. And roll left should turn the quad counterclockwise. Try to hover the quad a couple feet off the ground and do some testing with each control. Don't do any flying around yet. Just keep the quad facing away from you in a hover. After running the quad a while, check the temperature on each ESC and motor. If you've got one, use an infrared thermometer for more accurate measurements. But if you don't, you can just use your hand just to see what the temperature feels like on each motor in ESC. Make sure that the temperature is even between the motors and between the ESCs. If you get one that's hotter than the rest, it could indicate a problem. And you might want to consider replacing that one. That's the end of my checklist. I hope that helps you in your multi-rotor build with a KK2. So what did I miss? Please post any valuable tips for building multi-rotors that you have. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to get reminders for future videos.